Amen. Oh, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Are you blessed to be in the presence of the Lord? Then give the Lord a mighty shout of praise in the house. Amen. Shall we please bow for prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for bringing us thus far. We are here because of you. We want to tap from the fountain of life. That is the reason for our gathering. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that may you rain down your power, rain down your glory, rain down your unction upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so that we will leave your presence blessed and being transformed in all facets of life. In Jesus' name have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Shall we please be seated in God's presence? I'm, I'm honored and privileged to be here once again. I love this church. Amen. I love this church. I love this church. This is my second home. This is my second home. It's quite unfortunate that I'm with CCC. If I hadn't been with CCC, like, I'll be here with you. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm also uh, privileged to stand upon this exalted altar. Forgive me of my voice, okay? <clears throat> I was in Kumasi. I went there for a program, and uh, I had a call from Pastor Kingsley, so I didn't have an option. I have to come down and then be with you tonight, okay? Because I love him so much. I love him so much. He is a great man of God. He's a great man of God. Great man of God. And even though he's not with us here, but he's with you in spirit, isn't it? So wherever he is, let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Our mentor, our father, our brother. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. And let's celebrate Mama Ivy too. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Oh, and let's celebrate our mother. Our mother too is here. Let's celebrate our mother. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate. And let's celebrate all the pastors here. And the leaders, let's celebrate them. Amen, 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 amen. Shall we please be seated in God's presence? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I, I, I just want us to go straight to the word of God tonight. We don't have much time. We're stuck in a traffic for hours. But God being so good, we've been able to make it. Amen. All right. I, I just want us to deal with something. Tonight is power night, isn't it? Power night, power night. You know, you know, Pastor James, we have so many things in common. You know that he's Kwekumafu, I'm Kwekumafu. Kwekumafu. But, but, but uh, Pastor Kinsley stole him from me. <laughs> he, stole, he stole him from me. <laughs> yeah, he stole him from me. And when I was coming to, I came with a sister. I told him, I told her that, you see, House of Consecration Ministry is a ministry uh, blessed with gifts and talents. Yes, gifts and talent. So he should. He should uh, some of you, you don't know what you have here. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I have been to so many places. You know, when we talk about church that is blessed with gifts and talent, this church is one of the very few churches that are blessed. Are blessed. Are blessed. You have very good. You see, you don't have singers. You have worshippers. You have worshippers. And I pray. Last time I was, I was, I was, I was uh, conversing with Pastor James, and I was telling him that. Uh, so the singers that you have, are they able to unite? Because that has been, a, that has been problems almost everywhere where you have a lot of talents, they find it so difficult to unite. Sometimes when they sing, they compete. They, 
they have competitive spirit. So they don't minister, but they sing. And they said sing to satisfy their own curiosity and their own parochial interest. <laughs> I told, I told, I told Sister Presla to come with me so that at least we could tap something from here and then go. She is also a worshiper. Hallelujah. That's the main reason why I came from God. Amen. 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 All right. All right, tonight, tonight, I just want to touch on something. Um, and, and we'll soon zoom into prayer. We'll be dealing with demonic cycles. Demonic cycles, okay? Deal with demonic cycle. But uh, let's, let's move quickly to the word of God. Come with me to the word, to Genesis chapter 49, verse 9 and 10. For the sake of time, I'll just be running through, okay? I spent almost about two months teaching on this, but I'll just uh, spend a few minutes and then bring out some key points so that we'll be able to stand upon it and then pray. Okay, it says that Judah is a lion well from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stood down, he couched as a lion, and as a lion, so and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. Move on 10 to 10. It says that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So when, J when Jacob was about to die, he called all the 12 sons, and then he began to prophesy upon them. And you see, uh, the guy was so powerful and was so loaded with unction to the extent that whatever word that he prophesied upon the children, that was, it was more or less like a baton they were going to run with. So he called his sons, he called the firstborn, and then he prophesied upon him, Reuben. But because Reuben has slept with his concubine in his own couch, this guy was so angry, and then he didn't tell Reuben anything, but he harbored the pain and then bitterness in his heart. So he called Reuben and he told him that, Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are the excellency of my power and the strength of my ability, but you will not excel because you defile my couch with my own concubine, so you will not excel. So he prophesied premature death upon Reuben and upon the descendants of Reuben, the Reubenites. And then when he got to God, he says that God, a band of raiders shall overpower you, but you shall overpower them at last. So when you look at, and then when you got to Benjamin, he says that Benjamin shall be a ravenous wolf and shall protect the cause of Israel. So amongst all the 12 tribes of Israel, you realize that their prophetic word upon their lives were different. They weren't the same. So as you are seated here, let me tell you something. You see, sometimes people marry at age 20. Some at age 18, some at age 30, some at age 40. That is the prophetic word upon your life. So for the fact that everybody is marrying at age 20 doesn't necessarily mean that you should marry at age 20. And for the fact that somebody will travel abroad and succeed doesn't necessarily mean that you will travel and then succeed. Look at the prophetic word he prophesied upon the tribe of Judah and look at God. He says that God, a band of raiders shall overpower you, but you shall overpower them at last. But when he got to Judah, he says that the scepter shall not depart from you, nor shall a lawgiver come between your feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be the gathering of his people. So he was, trying, he was telling Judah that, Judah, as long as you live, you will provide kings for the nation Israel until, until Jesus has come. That was a prophetic word. But when he got to God, he says that a band of raiders shall overpower you, but you shall overpower them at last. Band of raiders in our time is demons. So it will seem as if demons are triumphing over you, but you will triumph over them at last. Are you getting it? So look at the, the prophetic word. So there are times that a sister or a brother will be going through hell. It will seem as if all hell has broken loose on the person. And somebody will be rejoicing. Somebody will be dancing. Somebody will be, will be saying that, hey, can, can you come to my party? 
So for the fact that you are suffering and somebody is rejoicing, doesn't necessarily mean that you should do everything within your power to celebrate. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. But the prophetic word was that they will, they will seem to attack you, but you will triumph over them at last. So, once they are about to prevail over you, then the tables will turn. And tonight, somebody's table will turn. Is somebody hearing me? The table will definitely turn. And hear this. He says that the chapter shall not depart from you, the tribe of Judah. Nor shall the Lord give accounts between his feet until Shiloh comes. So, he was telling them that Shiloh, before, Shiloh, before Jesus has come, the tribe of Judah will provide kings for him. Until Shiloh come. So every king must come from the tribe of Judah. But look at the king of Israel. Which tribe did he come from? Benjamin. That was when somebody from the tribe of Judah came. To be his associate. And he was so bored because he knew that the throne didn't belong to him. The throne belonged to that servant. And then he was doing everything within his power to kill him so that when he's no more, his son will reign. But Jonathan knew. <laughs> Anything that belongs to you, which doesn't belong to another person, and they are trying to overthrow you in order to take possession. Tonight, we will overthrow them and take possession of everything that belongs to them. Is somebody hearing me? So you will provide things for the nation Israel until Shiloh come. But when you read Genesis chapter 38, you know what happened? The founding father of the tribe of Judah. Wife died. And when the wife died, this is what he did. He was so lustful to the extent that he said that no, I must get somebody to sleep with. And then by then, Judah had three sons. The first one was Ed, the second one was Onan, and the third one was Shelah. And then Shelah was married to Tamar. And then, sorry, Er married to Tamar. And then Er did an abominable thing in the sight of God and God killed him. And because Er died, Onan had to marry Tamar to preserve the brother's genealogy or posterity. And the guy was so wicked. Because he realized that any seed that will come out of the intercourse between him and then Tamar will be of his brothers, but not him. So anytime he sleep with him, we sleep with her and he's about to discharge, then he will emit it on the floor. And God realized, sometimes I read this scripture and people say that because of this, when you even use condom, God will kill you. If you are married... Huh? And you feel that you don't want babies anymore. Use condom. No God will kill you. It, it is even righteous. Okay. Another time I will talk about that. Are you getting it? <laughs> so he, he, he will admit the semen on the floor. And God, God said that no, this guy is wicked. And God killed him. And then now Judah promised Tama that Tama. My son Shela is too young to marry you. So just wait for her, wait for him to grow. And when he's of age, I will let him marry you. And then Tatma said, okay, fine. It's agreed. And Tatma waited ah, for Shela to grow. But Judah was scared because Judah was saying that, ah, you were Baba Akupe, my first born a Second born, the third born, men sanfane mrane kuno. So he tried to hit Shela from Tama, and Tama also realized. You see, in Israel, if you don't give birth, you are considered as a curse. They see you as an accursed woman, and the woman said that I cannot be called an accursed woman. So the woman disguised herself as a shrine prostitute. And then she went and then sat by the wayside, the road at which Judah passes. 
<laughs> and then a time came that Judah was passing by. And this woman disguised herself and is, is, she sat down. And Judah was going. And at that time, Judah was so lustful because the wife had passed on. And so said, the moment she saw, he saw Tamar. He said that, oh, God, it's a beautiful woman. And then he started to negotiate with the woman. <laughs> and then the woman said that, oh, fine, if you want me, it's agreed. But I don't want any money from you. I want two things, your signet ring and then your staff. And then the man, you see, when some men are in mood, I wouldn't say any man. When some men are in mood, ne papa koko efu okura, he ma mentro, ebusua koko efu, obeti me dia chew. What made the type of Judah Judah? The woman said I want it. Said that what what has signet ring and stuff got to do with me? I'm in the mood. Me sra u o mood ni mu agene. the mood. And then he said that, okay, you take the signet ring. That was the authority God gave to the tribe of Judah. See, the signet, sorry, the staff. The staff is their leadership ability and their leadership prowess. Or say, the authority, just take it. And our leadership mantle, take it. Because he was, and then went to sleep with the woman. And right after that copulation, the woman got pregnant. And then somebody came to tell Judah that Judah, Tama, your daughter in law is pregnant. And Judah got angry. Judah said, Come on, bring her. I will not sit down for, her, for, for Tama to bring disgrace to my family. Bring her and let's stone her to death. So when the woman was coming, the woman was holding the signet ring and the staff. So the woman sat down and the elders asked her, who impregnated you? Said that the one who impregnated me is the one who owes the signet ring and then the staff. And then Judah looked at the woman, and Judah said that this woman is more righteous than me. Yeah. It's because I hid Shela from her. That is why she has done this to me. And when the woman conceived, there were twins in her womb. But what Judah did, because he gave out the signet ring and the staff, Judah, the tribe of Judah lost it. The prophetic word imposed upon them was forfeited. Because he gave it out just for one act of sex. Dakope, Nisrael, never sell your pride. Never sell your pride. Never sell your pride. This guy. And then, you see, in Israel, they have so many laws. They have more than 60-something laws. But you can categorize them into three. Civil laws, ceremonial laws, and the laws of morality. And according to the law of morality, come with me to Genesis chapter 23. Sorry. Uh, yes. Deuteronomy 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Come with me to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Okay, come with me to 32, rather. Okay. Oh, Deuteronomy 23, verse 1 and 2. 23, verse 1 and 2. It says that he that is wounded in the stones or have his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. You know what he's talking about. If you are impotent, you cannot enter into the assembly of God. Like the, the gathering like this, you can't even sit among us. Like you'll be killed. Mm. 
thank God for the blood of Jesus. <laughs> so it means that if you are impotent here, the tent will function. Okay, before you leave the presence of God. Is somebody hearing me? <laughs> give, give, a, give a guy a high five and tell the person it will function again. And then, that, and then the two, 23 verse 2, 2 says that a bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord. Even to his, to his term generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. This is according to the law of morality. So God was telling Judah that Judah, because of what you have done, nobody from your bloodline will enter into the congregation of God's people. It means that we'll even become a king of the nation Israel till the 10th generation. And in the patriarchal era, a generation was a period of 100 years. So 10 generations, how many years? So 1,000 years, nobody from the tribe of Judah can become a king. That was when, 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 when Israelites were calling for king. God bypassed the tribe of Judah, went to the tribe of Benjamin, and then gave them a king. Ten generations, thousand years. And when, when Tamar was giving birth, she gave birth to twins. Zerah was supposed to be the first one. While Zerah was coming, Pharaoh broke through. And then the midwife used a scarlet robe, red, to tie the hands. So instead of Zerah, Phares was first. So from Phares to David is 10 generations. So it will tell you that Phares begat Hezron. Hezron begat Ram. Ram begat Aminadab. Aminadab begat Nashon. Nashon begat Salmon. Salmon begat Boaz. Boaz begat Obed. Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David. 10 generations. So the, the, the prophetic word was that nobody from the tribe of Judah will enter into the congregation of the lost people. Till the 10th generation. And the 10th generation rested upon David. And when David, when it even rested upon him, look at how David even struggled to become a king. He survived more than 23 assassinating attempts from Saul. Because there were issues in the bloodline. So Pharaoh was supposed to become a king. He missed it. Hezron was supposed to become a king. He missed it. Ram, he missed it. Aminadab, he missed it. Nashon, missed it. Salmon, missed it. Boaz, missed it. Obed, missed it. Jesse, missed it. Ten generation, rested on David. And David now, became a king in Israel. He missed it. Because there was a cycle. The cycle was said that hey, nobody, you can't, you can't, you can't. It was something, some sort of repetitive something that was happening in the bloodline. Let me tell you something. Listen to me tonight. Tonight we're going to pray. Any demonic cycle that has become repetitive. Look at even the Abrahamic line. Abrahamic line, you, you, you look into that bloodline and you realize that there were a lot of issues. All the firstborn in that bloodline, they missed the father's blessing. The women that were so loved in that bloodline, they were barren. And they were liars. Because Abraham lied, Isaac lied. As for Jacob, he was a trickster and a supplanter. So sometimes you take a retrospective look into your bloodline and you realize that th th there are some negative cycle that keeps on repeating. And as a Christian, you come to church and they were quiet. And then they will tell you that if a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Yes, it's true. But Jesus Christ has done it already. What is the essence of prayer? The essence of prayer is to bring eternity past into eternity future. That is the essence of prayer. Jesus has done it already. So you stand upon your rights and then you declare that on the accounts of the blood of Jesus, I am free. 
I cannot be barren. My marriage will not delay. I cannot be poor. I deliver myself from every form of poverty. And then you'll be free. Is somebody hearing me? Tonight you'll be free. Amen. Tonight you'll be free. I just want to take you through something that happened in, in America in the 1811s and the 1830s. Then you see what happened. And then we'll stand upon that and then we'll pray. In 1811, in the 18th century, there were these Red Indians who occupied the northeastern south of America. And then they were so powerful. What they were using to fight people that were living in the south, in the east, in the west was their west. Their west. And then they have a very powerful man who was known as Tecumseh. And Tecumseh had a, had a half brother who was also known as Teswakwata. And these guys were so powerful. They can just look at you and then just speak something into your life and then you die. And everybody was afraid of them. And they were doing their own thing in the northeastern part of America. And then William Henry Harrison, around 1810 to, 18, to 1811, he came to power. And when he came to power, he said that no, the northern part of America is underdeveloped. Why can I sit down as a president and not develop that part of America? And then he called his military and then he told them that no, we have to go and then fight these people. And they told him that you can't fight them. These men are powerful. They don't use weapon of mass destruction, AK-47, but they are tongue. Because, because the Kumse has half brother who was known as the Swakwata was more or less like a, a Shawnee priest, a medicine man. Whatever he says will come to pass. So 1811, Henry said, that, no, let's go and fight them. And then um, he mobilized the American troop. They went and then fought these people. They fought, the, he, they fought them at a place called Tipecano. So the battle was known as the Battle of Tipecano. And they couldn't prevail over them. And two years thereafter, they fought them again at a place called Thames. So the battle was known as Thames. And then they succeeded killing Tecumse. So when they killed him, his half brother said that, why have you killed my brother? Then if that is what you have done to my brother, then anybody, any president in America or anybody, this is what he said, and I quote, anybody that assumed the high office in 20 years will die. And when he died, remember his death will remember my brother. Unquote. That was what he said. And then, look at what happened. Let me just take you through history a little bit. Then we pray. So William Henry Harrison was elected into power in 1840. In 1840, at age 68, he died of pneumonia. Exactly one month after his inauguration. And right after him, another 20 years will be what? 1840, 1860, right? 1860, Abraham Lincoln came to power. And when he was first elected in 1860 and was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth just after embarking on his second term in office in 1865. And to another 20 years will be what? 18 what? 1880, John A. Garfield won power. And he was shot at the back in July 1881. So he spent only one year in office. And from 1880, another 20 years will be what? 1900. 1900, William McKinley was also re-elected in 1900. And in 1901, after giving a speech at an exposition in Buffalo, he was shot while shaking hands with well wishes. And then he died of his wounds. And another 20 years will be what? 
1920, Warren G. Harden was also elected. And right after three years, he also died. And another 20 years will be what? 1940, Franklin Ro D. Roosevelt was also re-elected in 1940 and suffered a massive cerebral hemorrhage and died in 1945. Another 20 years will be what? 19 what? 1960, John F. Kennedy was elected in 1960 and was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald in 1963. Another, th another 20 years will be what? 19 what? 1980, Ronald Reagan was elected in 1980. 1980, right? But when Ronald came to power, it is believed that some of the Americans, pastors, came together and they, they said that no, we must intercept these predictions against our president. Because every 20 years, whoever came to power, 20 years' time will die. So when you come to power after 20 years, you will not die. But within that 20 year period, you will die. Ronald Reagan came to power and then they shot him. But the guy survived. Why? Because at that point, they had lifted him up in prayer. So prayer helped him survive. Are you getting it? Look at, uh, sequentially, they were dying. Look at the number of American presidents who died. They were just dying. This guy never used a weapon. But just the tongue. And let me tell you something. The tongue is more powerful than any weapon that you can think of this planet Earth. You can sit in your room and then use the words of your mouth to change things. That was what the guy did. And people have to come together and then pray and then intercept it. Tonight, I don't know what is in your mother's bloodline or your father's bloodline. I don't know, thing, I don't know about things that has been a, come like a cycle in your house or in your family. Tonight is going to be broken. That is why we call tonight a power night. You can't come to HCM and counter power and then go back the same. Your life will change. Amen. Come with me to this scripture. And then, then, then I will close. Then I will close. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 24 to 26. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Verse 24 to 26. Quick. Yes, can you please project it? 49 verse 24 to 26. It says that, watch this. It says that, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive delivered? I like the King James. Move on, 25. It says that, but thou sayest the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contend with thee, and I will save thy children. Move on to 26. And I will feed them that oppress you, thee, with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, and the Mighty One of Jacob. Amen. Listen to what the scripture is saying. Can I, can I have three people? Please. Okay, fine. Three. Okay. It says that shall the prey be taken from the mighty. So this is the mighty. The mighty one in this scripture is talking about Satan. <laughs> you know, pastor can never be Satan. Pastor is an angel. Okay. Uh, but for the sake of illustration, pastor, yes, bear me up. Okay. And this is the prey. And this is a family member. Okay. Okay. So the Bible is saying that shall the prey be delivered from the mighty? A prey, the mighty one can be also called predator. So he's saying that a, a hungry lion 
when a hungry lion pounces on the deer, will the hungry lion allow the deer to go scot free? Okay. So the moment the lion pounces on the deer, the deer becomes a captive, a captive to the lion. Okay. And he asks the question again. And he's saying that, can the lawful captive be delivered? A lawful captive is somebody that, let me say that, our brother owes the deer himself. Okay. The deer is his bona fide property. And now he comes to the mighty one and negotiate with the mighty one. That, oh, I have a deer and I need money. So how much will you pay? And then the mighty one says that, okay, fine. I'll give you $10,000. He said, no, I need $20,000. So they negotiate. And finally, the mighty one gives the family member $15,000. And now the, 15, the mighty one will hand over the deer to him. So now because he has paid for the deer, the deer becomes his lawful captive. It's no longer a prey, but a lawful captive. Because the, now the, the prey has graduated to now become a lawful captive because transaction in the spirit had already been made. Are you getting it? So God is saying that in the realms of the spirit, if Satan gets hold over your life, can you be delivered? Or if any member of your family give you out in the realms of the spirit to Satan for money and you now become a lawful captive to Satan can that person be delivered and the Bible says that yes the captive the, the captive will be delivered no he says that the prey will be delivered and the lawful captive delivered for I will contend with him that contends with you. So the moment you realize that Kai, this battle, I can't fight it. And then you bring God to the equation. God now takes the battle. God will now come in like this. And then we'll separate the prey and the lawful captive from the mighty one. And now God will now begin to contend with him. Because Satan will be telling God that I owe him. I prayed for him. You can't get him. And God will tell him that it was my son Jesus Christ who died for him. So the blood of Jesus has already paid for the death. So you can't owe him and then destroy him. So he says that I will contend with him that contends with you. And I will save your children. So God is no longer going to save him alone. He's going to save every member of the family. Tonight is somebody hearing me. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter the level that Satan has taken you to. God is stepping into the matter. He is stepping into the matter. You can become a prey and a lawful captive. But when Jesus steps in, Jesus will deliver you. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? You know, I have attended oppressors. Can you please be seated? God bless you. Let's clap for them. My mother fell sick. In those days, I didn't know God. And then they took him to a pastor. I was a Nankaba pastor, a Cherubim and a Seraphim pastor. And then he looked at my mother and then he said that, no, where in the realms of the spirit they've taken you to, nobody can rescue you. Nobody can rescue you. That you have gotten to the final level in the Zodiac kingdom. That was what he said. So nobody can rescue you. Nobody can rescue you. But my mom survived. Can you imagine in the occult kingdom, you can get to a certain level and they will tell you that nobody can rescue you. But God is saying that you can be a prey, you can be a lawful captive. But still, when you call on me, I will answer you and I will deliver you 
from everybody that has taken dominion over your life. Is somebody hearing me? But when Jesus steps into the matter, let me tell you something. The story becomes different. The story becomes different. Is somebody hearing me? Tonight is power night. Hey, let me tell you something. They can tell you that in this family, nobody can marry. In this family, I have dealt with issues in a family that every firstborn in that family will die. Yeah, every firstborn in the family will die. And I've also handled an issue that any firstborn in that family is a person of a disability. You will definitely become disabled. Every firstborn that is born into that family. And I am coming from a background that me, that is why I thank God for Jesus. Because he says that the bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the lost people. Even to the 10th generation shall he not enter. If I were to be in the Old Testament, I wouldn't have been here preaching. Because I didn't know where I was born. I just grew up. I didn't even know my father. And to say the bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the lost people. Okay, to the tenth generation shall he not enter. That is what the scripture is saying. I didn't know him. I just grew up. And then they said that my father is here, my father is here. And because I, I then I had given my life to Christ, I said, no, okay, I have to go looking for you. And I, and I went and then found him. When I, and when I found him, I came to my mother and asked him, Mom, why did you leave daddy? said that your dad was into spiritism, into occultism. And your dad can be there and then we'll be talking with marine spirit. And marine spirit warned me that if I don't leave your father, he will kill me. That was the reason why I left. So I sat my father down and I was asking him questions. And then he started explaining things, narrating things to me. And I invited him to Takurade. By then I was in Takurade, pastoring the CCC church. When I invited my father to the house, the first night, I was there and around 12.30 to 1 in my kitchen. It was as if people had come to the kitchen and then they were messing up with my utensils. <laughs> and I had a house help. The house help ran from his room and I heard him knocking. Go, 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 suffer, 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 be me, be me, be me. I said, I don't see me, who crow for you, fear. And he came. So the next day, the morning I sat my dad down and asked him, Daddy, what happened? I saw your people. He said that, yes, wherever I go, they locate me. I'm like a gate, I'm like a point of access to them. So my presence brings them to wherever I am. Most of you don't know. In the witchcraft kingdom, we have five different types of witches. We have black, we have blind, we have Kalin, we have white, we have a Bramelian witch. And those who are more wicked are the blind witches. The blind witches are more, most often they are the house helps that we bring to our house. And the moment you bring that, they are like gates. They are like, and a gate is a point of access with the purpose of entry and then exit. So their presence alone can invite demons into your house. Their presence alone. So yeah, they came. And then I, I, talk, I spoke to my father. I said, I told him that I'll pray for him. And then he slept. The next day, midnight, was there. And this time, my dad was leading them to my room. And they were coming. So I started fighting. I fought with them for about 15 minutes. And then they disappeared. So it was Sunday. The, the, next, the, the, the following day was Sunday. And Sunday, Sunday, I took him to church. When we went to church, around that community, eh, I, I, I haven't even seen ravens around there before. But they, about 100 ravens came, to, this is physical, and surrounded my office, about 100. So I looked into the window and they were like, oh, oh. and I said, Daddy, I hope you know them. He said, yes, I am the reason for their gathering. Gates. And then I called some pastors. We led him to Christ and then we delivered him. Don't joke with these people. He was delivered. And you see, my father's line 
my father's firstborn died. The next one died. The other one also died. So I was asking him and he was telling me that yes, because he has sold out all his children to the marine spirit. So marine spirit has to kill them and use them for sacrifice. And I was telling him, am I part? And he said that no, you are not part because you were born from a different woman. So they can't locate you. But that was a lie. Because they wanted me. They wanted me. They wanted to use me. And that was the very time I had given my life to Christ. So people were calling me nocturnal human being. Because every day I was seeing spirits. Sometimes I would be sleeping. And then they would carry me and then throw me outside the room. And then I would see myself lying outside my room. And it happened not once, not twice, not thrice. And recently, when I even came to Accra, I was there at midnight, and a hand touched me. And I walked directly to my living room. When I went to the living room, our occult grandmaster was sitting there, live. I was sharing with the church, live. He saw me, and then he screamed at me. I was so terrified, because I'm, I'm alone in the room. My wife had left to Kumasi with the children, and I was left alone in that house. My hand just touched me. I walked straight to the... This man was sitting there. He rebuked me and I also said, in the name of Jesus, what do you want here? And he came, was trying to held my neck and then strangled me. So we were resting. I also held him like this. We were struggling and then he left. He vanished. He vanished. I get in it. Because my dad told me that amongst his children, nobody will survive. Nobody will survive. Because he had sentenced them to the marine spirit. And marine spirit had to kill them and use them for sacrifice. But I stand here this day to declare to you. That the prey will be delivered. The lawful captive will be delivered. What are people telling you? They are telling you that in your family, everybody cannot marry. And then you've accepted that fact. Let me tell you something. After tonight's power night, let me tell you something. You will live here and then you will marry. You will live here and then you will be free. Is somebody hearing me? Stand on your feet and let's dive into prayer. You will be free tonight. You will be free tonight. Is somebody hearing me? You will be free. You cannot die prematurely. I me, mean, when you come to my mother's bloodline, there is premature death. Nobody raised 70. In my bloodline, when you marry, there is an extramarital affair. There is divorce. Divorce. There are divorce in my bloodline. Divorce in my blood. Everything that you can think of on this earth is in my bloodline. But I have survived. And let me tell you something. You will survive. You will survive because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Is somebody hearing me? You know something? Last time I was there and I was reading the, the book of Exodus. And God was telling me that, do you know Moses? And I said that, yes, I know Moses very well. He said that, do you know the meaning of Moses? And I said that, yes, God, what does it mean? He said, search for it. And then I searched for it. And I realized that the, the meaning of Moses is to draw out. And God was telling me that, yes, I drawn Moses out from the mother's womb. And after three months, I, I hid him. And after three months, because Moses cannot be hidden, I have to also draw him out. And then place him in the river Nile. And in the river Nile, Pharaoh's daughter drawn him out. And after drawing him out from the river Nile, they now drawn him into the palace. And in the palace, because Moses cannot be hidden, he was drawn out to save the children of Israel. And after saving them, he was drawn out into the wilderness. And after 40 years, he was drawn out from the wilderness to come back to Egypt and then rescue his people. And right after that, he was drawn out into the Red Sea. And right after the Red Sea, he was also drawn out. So let me tell you something. It doesn't matter where you've been hypnotized, where you've been manipulated, where you've been bound, where you've been tied. Let me tell you something. You are coming me out is somebody hearing me shout i am out lift up your right hand and say this after me say in the name of jesus whose i am and whom i serve who and whom i serve tonight i declare i declare on the account of the blood of jesus of jesus that any attack any attack any demonic cycle 
in my mother's bloodline in my father's bloodline against my life against my life i break myself free from that cycle in the name of jesus i break myself free from poverty from the cycle of poverty from the cycle of premature death from the cycle of barrenness from the cycle of retrogression from the cycle of scarcity from the cycle of disappointment from the cycle of failure from the cycle of breakdown somebody lift up prayer in the name of jesus Somebody is coming out tonight. 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 is breaking free 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 tonight is your moment your night of deliverance your night of freedom your night of victory your night of emancipation in the name of the next prayer you see every demonic cycle is sensitive to time when the time is not yet due you will think that nothing can happen to you but you can only intercept it with prayer with prayer so we are dealing with any demonic cycle which is time sensitive okay because sometimes they can they can predict it in the realms of the spirit and it will be hanging in your realm and if someone doesn't intercept it or if you don't intercept it yourself when the time which is scheduled for that thing to be made manifest in your life is due it will come to pass it will come to pass when you read the account of john the baptist the bible said that herodias nest a grudge against john the baptist in her heart she nursed the grudge because John the Baptist had prophesied that it was not good for Herod to kill the brother Philip and take Philip's wife. But the woman became so angry and then the woman, other version says that the woman conceived hatred and bitterness in her heart. And the woman was waiting for an appointed time. But the Bible said that there was a set day that Herodias' daughter danced before the father. And the father said that, wow, you, you, you've done so well what do you want tell me even to the half of this kingdom and it will be given to you and then the daughter went straight to the mother and asked the mother mama what should I tell daddy to give me and then the mother said the head of John the Baptist because the woman had already nursed and conceived and was waiting for an appointed time and the appointed time the bible says that the opportune time came somebody hearing me let me tell you something tonight any demonic seed anything that demon had conceived 
in the mind of their womb or in their spiritual womb and they are waiting for an appointed time to execute it tonight we will abort it is somebody hearing me say i will abort it i will abort it any curse that is hanging in the realms of the spirit and is waiting for an appointed time to be released against me tonight I abort it. 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 In the name of Jesus, come on, lift up prayer. 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 In the name of Jesus, mando legete ba 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 ba. Yanto kato ba. Yanto legete ba 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 ba. Arwanko to pranto. Yanto kato. Yanto le ba ba ba. Rato pato. Yata kata. Yata pata. Rato legete ba ba. Rato le ba ba. We abort it. 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 Any curse, any curse hanging in the realms of the spirit against our lives. We abort it. We abort it. We abort it. We abort it. In the name of. Lastly, Romans chapter eight, verse one and two. It says that now there is no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. And listen to the two. The two says that. Those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So if you are in Christ Jesus, let me tell you something. There is no condemnation. So people in your household can be condemned. But you will make a difference. You will make a difference. And tonight, I came to break every demonic cycle from your life. For you to be able to make a difference. Shout, I will make a difference. Shout, I will make a difference. Shout, I will emerge. Shout, I will emerge. Shout, I will, I will, I will prosper. Shout, I will prosper. Shout, I will be promoted. Shout, I will excel. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand and say this. And say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any demonic cycle. Any demonic cycle. Any area of my life. Which the devil is praying upon upon and hear me hear me if you don't pray you'll be prayed upon if you don't pray p-r-a-y you will be prayed p-r-e-y on upon so it's high time for you to pray but tonight anybody that is praying upon your life from your mother's line from your father's line around your community at your workplace any demonic cycle any demonic cycle that wants to take over your life in the name of Jesus I declare it broken can somebody shout break can somebody shout break can somebody shout I am free I am free I am free on the account of the blood of Jesus I am free I am free somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in the house I have to close I have to close Another time we will continue. We will continue. But I want to agree and pray with these people. If you are here and you are fighting a battle. And then you think that you need a reinforcement. Just come. You are fighting a certain battle. The pastors are here. We will all join our forces together. And then pray with you. Come. 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 There are some battles you need a reinforcement. Just come. Pastors, please can you come. Let's lay hands on them. You need a reinforcement. Need a reinforcement. Anoint them. Father, we anoint this oil the name of the father the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit and through this oil father may you bring emancipation deliverance and freedom to your people in jesus name amen just touch the oil pastors touch the oil touch the oil touch the oil and then pray for them pray for them if the oil touch on you you are free indeed indeed my chains are gone I've been set free. Mm, my God, my say. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. By the reason of this oil, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. You can sit down. When we touch you, you can sit down. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free. By the reason of this anointing, you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free by the reason of this anointing 
you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free by the reason of this anointing you are free in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus by the reason of this anointing you are free pastor please come please come ah, pastor who is Vicky your wife where is she we have to pray for her we have to pray the devil has launched an attack against their life if we don't pray we pray for the fruit of the womb was hearing Vicky, 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 else they will attack and any seed that, they, come on, uh, pastor, when we close, we'll pray, we'll, we'll pray for, pastors, can we pray? come, come together, let's pray, let's pray for us, let's pray, and let's, let's pray for the wife, let's pray for the wife, I, I see a prim, stretch forth your hand, stretch forth your hand, stretch forth your hand, let's pray, let's, let's pray, and pray, and prolong the wife days and years on it, and every seed of the womb, God will preserve it, and none of them will die prematurely, can we pray, let's pray, let's pray, stretch forth your hand, Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. In the name of Jesus. Father, we agree with your servant. And we disappoint and we disengage the wife from every attack of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. The son of the living God. In the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. Young lady, come. Come. Please pray. Okay. Pray harder for your marriage. Pray harder for your... This lady is anointed. You see... Seriously, I've been seeing this woman in my dreams. I've been seeing her in my dreams and God is telling me that he's going to take you to places. But the only thing that will have bought, that will have bought the plans and the purposes of God concerned, listen to your father a lot. This thing that I'm telling you, your father has said it to you. Any man that comes your way, make sure your father confirms it. Huh? Make sure your father prays and then approves Never think that it's getting too late, so I will settle with this allergy. Okay, I'm not saying allergy. Okay, you cannot marry any ordinary person because of the anointing of God upon your life. God is telling me that you are a star. Let me tell you something not even Ghana. Yeah, Ghana will hear of you, and the world will also hear of you because you are a star. You are a star, and you are about to rise. You are about to rise. But if we don't pray for him, if we don't pray for her, she might end up settling with another person. And then they would take her out of this house. That is the deception that is going on in the realms of the spirit. But this lady is anointed. Let me tell you something. She's anointed. Yeah. Since I started coming here, anytime I go on my closet, I pray for her. I just admire and, 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 and I'll be taking her from here like you took Pastor James from me. I'm, <laughs> I have to... <laughs> I'll talk to pastor. Stretch forth your hand. Let's pray for her. Let's pray that God will bless her. The star in her will rise. And whoever God has ordained for her, nobody can take that person out of her life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bless her with the blessings of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. 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 Oh, bring your offerings and let me pray with you. Bring your offerings. Take Take an offering from your pocket. 100 cities, 50 cities, 30 cities, 20 cities. Come and shake hands with me and drop it. Shake hands with me and drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Father, I release financial blessing upon the life of your servant. I release financial blessing upon the life of your servant. I release it. I release it. Shake hands with me before you leave. I release it. I release it upon your life. I release it. I release it upon your life. 50 cities, 10 cities, you can come. I release it. I release it. Five cities you can come. I release financial blessing. Why is the oil? Of God. Why is the oil? I'm no longer. I release financial prosperity. I release it upon your life. I release it. I release it upon your life. I release it. I release it upon your life. I release it. I release it upon your life. I release it. Young woman. You are blessed. God is telling me that he's making you a millionaire. Okay? Okay, he's making you a millionaire. Financially, you'll be blessed. And God is blessing you because of the house of God. Because you have a heart for the things of God. And God is telling me to tell you that because of that, he's going to bless you. He's going to enlarge your coast and bless you. Okay? And bless you. But make sure you connect to the father of the house. Whatever business that you want to invest in, make sure he prays with you 
and then he tells you to invest then you can invest okay fine father in the name of jesus i release that blessings upon her life in jesus name i release financial blessing release financial blessing release financial blessing release financial blessing release it upon your life i release it upon your life I release it i release it i release it upon your life i release it i release it upon your life i release it upon your life i release it i release it upon your life i release it i release it upon your life 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 i release it i release it i release it i release it drop it i release it upon your life i release financial blessing release financial blessing release financial blessing release financial blessings upon your life in jesus name Give the Lord a mighty club of friends. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you been blessed? Oh, have you been blessed tonight? What do we say to the man of God? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. What a wonderful night.